This Let's conference will everyone. now be recorded. Um, hello, this is Priyanka. And today let's uh, take a look at job entry. Um, let me start presenting my screen. Okay, let me move the screen aside. Okay, so um, in Epicor, uh, let's look at what is a job actually. So a job can manufacture one or more quantities uh, for a specific part. Um, and we define these quantities by creating demand links within the job record. Um, so anytime we want to manufacture more uh, more than one part, you know, like if we have like hundreds of parts that need to be manufactured together, then a job record is created. These job uh, th these jobs they uh, are run to fulfill the inventory requirements. Um, and the job entry accesses information uh, in the orders, in the purchase orders, inventory, and um, any other sources. So um, it, the, these jobs, they contain detailed information on the material that uh, it's going to be using, the operations that it will run on, and any assemblies it requires to complete production. Uh, as we create a new job, we assign a method of manufacturing to it. Um, if we, uh, in the method of manufacturing, we have these assemblies, the bill of operations, bill of materials, um, and all of these here. So when we look at the navigation tree on the job entry, we can see that the top level uh, contains assembly, uh, contains the assembly zero. And then when we expand it, we can see the either the sub assemblies or, and then the operations that build the final assembly, the materials that are used to build these production parts and all that. Um, Let's go ahead and open job entry. Uh, we can start by creating a new job here. We can either assign it uh, the next job number, so probably like 2431, so the next job number would be 2432, or we can give it our own job number if, if you would like to um, assign it something else. And then um, this part is used for quick job entry, which we can take a look again. Uh, but initially, let's start by creating a, a new job in job entry. The job entry is the base production program that we use to create these job records. Um, so the main important thing here would be the part that we need to select, um, which we are going to uh, manufacture. So let's say I select a part here. And then all these fields like the description, the group, um, all of these, they come up from the uh, part record. Um, and then we cannot enter the production quantity here directly because this production quantity is uh, a ca calculated field that comes up when we start adding these demand links and everything. Um, we'll take a look at that also. And the other important required field here uh, is the required by date. Uh, this is a required field too. Uh, and then we can save the record the job record and start entering our manufacturing details that we can do it from here on get details and schedule and by default the part number comes up here the part that we are uh, going to be manufacturing and here on get details we have these three methods that we can uh, include these details from either it could be from the method of manufacturing it could be from the job uh, from a previous job or it could be from a previous code that had these details. Uh, the main important thing here would be like if you're trying to use a job, 
um, then that ha would have to be some kind of a template job. Um, it, this part number here comes up automatically. And then when we search, if there, if there was any template job available for that part, it would come up here. Mm, let's say we select this one here. Click OK. So here we have this template field. And when, when this field is checked, we can uh, okay. reuse the, these details on another job that we are creating. Then we can schedule this. Uh, it can be either a backward or a forward one. Um, and then when we look at the um, assemblies here, we got we get this whole uh, tree structure here, in, including the assembly, the the operations, um, the bill of operations, and all of the bill of materials here. Uh, if at all this part would have had any sub assemblies, all of those would have been included here too. Um, and then we could uh, edit those fields here in the, when we go into the sub assemblies. Uh, and then for um, each of the uh, each of the operations, we can go ahead and kind of like edit all these fields that we need. Like um, if this was not the operation that you would like to use, we can go ahead and select what we want to change it to. Um, we can set up, we can give the setup hours for it. Um, the the labor and uh, labor entry here, we have two options. We have back flush and time and quantity and uh, quantity only or ba time back flush quantity. Then we can select either of these um, and we can give in the quantity here. And then here um, on the scheduling factors, we have some columns that can be edited like um it could be either the start to start or finish to start or finish to finish which is like start to start would be like um like you know the operations would start at the same time but finish to start usually we select finish to start so like when operation 10 is completed go ahead and start the operation 20 and um things like that finish to finish would be like everything should be finished at the same time um and then uh, if at all we want to add some operation which was not already on this tree structure here we can add an operation um and then similarly on materials you can go ahead and uh, edit all these fields like the quantity uh, or you can also change this part if we feel that this part is uh not you know if you want to change some uh material here you can go ahead and change the part here uh you can give the scrap quantity here uh if it's a fixed quantity uh then i think it doesn't consider the scrap quantity you can also give the related operation here maybe this material is related to operation 10 or 20 and all that those can be changed here uh and if the material is something like make direct uh then it can uh then we have the option to select from which uh site and warehouse this has to be uh selected from and if it's a purchase direct then we get our these options are enabled here so that we can select the supplier and uh, id um, and um, we can save this record here uh, apart from this um, met uh, method of manufacturing details here we also have the demand links for a job so uh, we have three different types which is the make to stock make to order and make to job when we give quantities in each of these, they kind of like um, calculate into the production quantity here. Um, so when we take a look at make to stock, uh, this demand link, it creates a demand for a part quantity that will be stored within the company's inventory. We need to indicate both this warehouse uh, and the quantity. Suppose I give something like 50 and then I save this record. If I go back uh, onto my job details, I can see that my production quantity was updated here. Uh, similarly, uh, we have make to order uh, demand link. This satisfies a release on a sales order. First, we go ahead and select the uh, order, the line information and the release information. And then we enter the production quantity. Okay, maybe this is not valid. But yeah, we can go ahead and create a, a make to order here. Similarly, the third, third demand link that we have is the make to job. 
this uh, demand link defines the part quantity needed to manufacture parts on some other job uh, first we select the parts that are needed and then we enter the production quantity that the receiving job requires so we have these three demand links here uh, and all the quantities that we give here kind of add up to our uh, let's select Okay, we can kind of like uh, select our job uh, assembly and material here and give whatever the production quantity should be, which kind of like adds up to our um, production quantity here. Uh, then the, the unit of measure, all this comes up from the part record itself. Um, and uh, we have this mode over here. It can either be sequential or concurrent. So sequential uh, mode, when we select that, it shows the production quantity. Uh, for how many end parts need to be produced. But when we select the concurrent mode here, uh, that shows us how many final parts are manufactured by multiple operations. And it, it kind of is like a calculation for demand quantity uh, divided by yield per operation. And then we have, uh, we can also give the scheduling whether you want it to be high priority. If you're looking to fulfill some order, you can just make it like high priority. Um, and then we have these, um, so this one kind of is released, but initially when we uh, create the job, uh, these checkboxes are not checked. So the engineer checkbox is when we have, uh, uh, when the job is ready for production, then it must have the uh, method of manufacturing to it. And then we select the engineer. If we select the released, both of these checkboxes are checked and released is like, it makes the job available to the shop floor um so that they can start manufacturing this um and when we finish the method of manufacturing and the job is ready to produce right away just select this release and both these are selected and they get pushed on to the um scheduling uh job scheduling um and then here on this overflow menu we have these um the job traveler and the, the production detail print reports here. The print job traveler kind of like gives us the whole detailed structure of the uh, of our uh, job here. Um, and then the print production report uh, detail here, it kind of gives us like an estimate for the job. Let's go ahead and uh, submit this also. We have a ton of options here. Uh, and we can select like we can print the material transactions what is the breakdown a uh, cost breakdown what are the operations uh if at all it has any serial numbers we can go ahead and select this checkbox here um it's just taking a little while but the uh for the traveler report and the production uh, report would come up okay it's just taking time but it will come up so basically this is like a uh, like a brief uh, summary of what I wanted to show for the job entry um, and just let me know if anyone has any questions we, we can get I'll leave the screen sharing so that I can show the report So here's the job traveler report, which kind of gives us the whole detailed structure of the job, the operations, the materials used, um, and all that. And here on the job production detail report, this is really important because we kind of get like an estimate here um, of how much the job would cost and things like that. 